I scream, you scream, we all scream for I pace. <laughs> and this is it. Yeah, this is the 2022 Jaguar I pace EV400 HSE. Is that like top trim? Top trim. That's you can it. only get an HSE. That's cool. it. In North America. Um, so, this is the world car of the year from 2019. They've done some minor, very tiny little refreshes. And, you know, the point is to see now that the competition has, you know, caught up, is this still any good? So, for 2022, the I Pace EV400 HSE starts at 99,800 Canadian dollars. And as tested, this one is about 107,000, which makes it pricier than the Tesla Model Y, even a BMW iX. Now, do you notice that we're rolling backwards, even though I'm not pressing anything? Yeah, I was gonna say you might want to touch the brake, but no, or uh... the gas. So the thing that I don't like about this, right off the bat, is the regen braking. First of all, it's not that strong. So look, if I let go of the gas, and it's on high. Okay, you can even make it low. Yeah, it's it... stopping, but it's not like it's not actually replacing braking. Yeah, so one pedal driving is a bit tricky in this one you can do it but it's very inconsistent if you like take your foot really quickly off the gas sometimes it will do like a full stop like, so you're saying it's adaptive no. i don't i haven't figured it out it's confusing that's yeah. what it is so not the best system however the brake pedal feels great so overall not a big problem but for us that drive all other electric cars the truth is that this uh one pedal driving is much better in other cars especially teslas what if you stomp on it so stops, that was a break. Stops pretty well. That was a break. What do you mean? Stomp on what? The gas pedal? Or gas? Is it, what's it called in EVs? Accelerator? <laughs> <laughs> so what's new for 2022? Well, first of all, you get now an 11 kilowatt charger. That is for level two AC charging. Wow, it's pouring rain. Yeah. Anyway, the DC fast charging is still limited to 100 kilowatts, so you don't get that really super fast charge. Like from 10% to 80, it needs about 48 to 50 minutes. But you do get now the updated infotainment system, the PV Pro, as they call it, which they introduced with the Defender. So that's pretty nice. And you also get a new grill. So the front grill used to be all black. Now it has some chrome accents. And that is pretty much it with the updates. Are you a chrome guy? Ah. On this car, I don't mind it, especially in silver. It's really nice. What about a brushed aluminum guy? I like everything. I just don't like piano black, which is quite a lot in here, but... There's something wrong with you. Piano black is awesome. The good thing with this piano black is that it's at spots that you don't really touch, so you don't really make it dirty, which is good. What do you think of the exterior design, Steve? Because I think this is one of the nicest designs uh, Ian Cullum has ever made. I think Ian Cullen took the F-Type and stretched his imagination on it and turned it into a nice, hot looking SUV. It's got the looks of an F-Type, but evolved. That's what I think he did with it. I'm probably wrong, but that's my opinion. I do like the fact that it has active aero. So there's like a, a pass-through of air from the, in the front hood that actually works and it, uh, it improves the slipstream, uh, the CD coefficient, whatever. Let it rain, let it rain, let the pain go away. What the heck are we doing today? Anyway, to sum up the exterior design, well, I really love this body shape. I love, in silver, you can actually see all the lines, so you appreciate it a little bit more. This car is the one that introduced the shape to, you know, the Mach-E and later for the EV6 to completely steal it. It's still one of the best looking EVs, I think, together with the Ionic 5 and the Mach E. They're my favorite shapes. It's quiet. What's mm -hmm. under the hood? Under the hood is a very tiny little storage area where you can put your charging cables and maybe a few other very small items. A little tiny box, no frunk really. It's like a. There is a frunk. frunk. There is a frunk. Just not. Is the frunk a flunk? No. No. It's at least okay. there. It's, it's better than others. It's not as good as a Tesla, but it's there. Um, further down, you get an electric motor that drives the front wheels. Yeah. At the back, you get another electric motor that drives the rear wheels. Also dual motor, all wheel drive. Dual motor. Ball. It is all wheel drive. And in between the two motors, you get a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is bigger than, you know, most of the other competition. That's what she said. But it's still, the range is 373 at a full charge kilometers, this much in miles. Yeah, so it's not, the best range but you know what other evs that came a lot later are still around there so kudos for jaguar for you know three year 
roll DB is still current. That's good. It makes a total of 394 horsepower and 512 pound-feet of torque. It is all-wheel drive, as we said, and it has a single-speed automatic transmission. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour is supposed to come in 4.8 seconds. We measured 5.1, which is not that bad. And in dynamic mode especially, it pulls really well. It's not the quickest, but it's one of the quickest. I really like it. Me too. Did you notice? No. Of course. <laughs> Shut up. Did you notice how nice, quiet, and refined this car is? I did. Honestly, we've driven almost every other EV, like newer ones. This one, with the adaptive air suspension and its build quality and sound insulation. But you said it right there, man. The, the air suspension right there is the money for this car. It's EV. so good. EV. And it's Sorry. so quiet. And it's so refined. I yeah. mean, it is expensive, but you do see where your money goes. Yeah, it's worth every penny. It's one of the smoothest rides I've been in. It's You have to drive this car to appreciate how good it is and how much better it is compared to even a Tesla Model Y. I'm sorry, but this is so much better than a Tesla Model Y. Well, the Model Y is a little less comfortable in my opinion. The seats aren't as nice. Well, these seats are really comfortable. Yeah. But the suspension? The Model Y suspension is not good at all. No. This is like <laughs> gliding over road. It's just gliding over every bump. It's just soaking up all the roads, little mean. Ugh. When you're 60 years old and you buy a, a crossover electric whatever and you want, first of all, brand recognition, so you want something poshy, you want something that looks great, and you want something that rides beautifully, this is the one. Yeah, hands down. Can you stop in this thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, good point. All right, so <laughs> let me rephrase that. How good is it at stopping? You know what, the brakes aren't that big, but with the region and everything, um, it works really well. We can't test a, a 100 to zero because it's raining outside, so pointless measurement. But well, you could slide a little bit further. Yeah, I mean, the pedal feels great. The brakes, you know, throughout the week I was driving the car, very confident pedal, like, I had no complaints. And despite this thing weighing uh, 2.1 tons and something, wow, no problem. It's uh, The brakes are actually really, really good. I like them. Okay, so listen. Without being a douche, does this car turn? Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic question. And um, I think it's the most important second part after comfort with this EV. They've tuned the suspension perfectly. They've given it the best balance between comfort and handling. Yeah, Because I mean, yeah. even in comfort mode, there's a lot of body movement. So it does roll and lean and whatever, but it's so good. Wow, like, that's crisp. <laughs> It feels planted. It feels like a regular car. That's what I love about it. It feels like a Jack, like in Jags, they just, they drive beautifully. You know what? I think that's a philosophy for them because a lot of their cars feel that way. It's just point and shoot. The steering feels very nice, okay? I mean, it's not a hydraulic steering. It's, you know, but it, there's weight to it. There's feedback. There's, it's a nice, Feeling it, the car feels agile, athletic. It's light on its feet. Yeah. It doesn't complain. And then when you put it in dynamic mode, it even sends a bit more bias, torque bias to the back. It becomes a little bit playful. It turns just fine. I mean, a little fucking well, around. A like, little understeer there, but yeah. you know. But it's very easy to control. Like even when it does understeer, you can you know fully tuck that face back in, do whatever you know crazy shit you want. It feels That's really almost good. sporty. That's I really, really like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. I've never, you've never done that with me in the car, and, even and you're as a not passenger, complaining, right? No, it feels so safe. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, nothing feels safe with you in it, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just. At the same time, okay, even though we are in dynamic mode right now, see how comfortable it still is. It handles the way it does, and it still, it still rides like a jack. It rides like a luxury car, and that's the beauty of it. Look at this bump. Nothing. Nice. I like it. I'm telling you, the suspension and the whole driving experience is, is just phenomenal in this car. I love it. So, I think what our viewers are really wondering. Have you tested the Shag as the Shagwar? No. Although, I, uh, I can say that based on the space in the back, it's one of the best Shagwars you can get.
So the seats are amazing. They support the body really well. They're very comfortable. Love them. They're also heated, ventilated. You get a heated steering wheel as well. So the driving position is excellent. It almost feels like a regular sedan car. Love it. And visibility, even through that tiny window in the back, it's not that bad. It's fine. And look at the roof. Isn't that roof amazing? Mm -hmm. All I love glass. it. It's the money. And in the back, I like that shape it does over there. It feels like uh, you're driving the, the little shuttle the Jetsons had. Remember that one? No. Come on here. I never watched the Jetsons. Uh, it was kind of like, uh, I mean, Judy was all right, but I mean, <laughs> there was nothing else to it for me, you know? Like, the dad yeah. was just not. I love the intro. Anyway. Rear roominess is also phenomenal. You get crazy good leg room, very good room for your knees, your feet, your head, everything is nice. You also have these little hidden pockets right underneath the seat for extra space. It's all very cool back there. The trunk is also quite large. It's 505 liters. You get a power lift gate and a very nice and puffy carpet inside. I love it. The interior is excellent, both in terms of design and quality. Fit and finish is great. It sure feels like a luxury car. Equipment wise, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's wireless. You have lots of USB ports for charging. You get an ionizer right here for your farts. So, na 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 na, go ahead. <laughs> you get a heated windscreen. You get a very nice heads up display, a very clear and customizable instrument cluster. You get a nice backup camera. You get configurable EV charging stuff through this app right here. You get very good lane keep assist with adaptive cruise and blind spot monitors. And you know what's really cool about this thing? On the rear doors, it has blind spot monitors that flash if like another car or a bike or something is approaching from the back. It tells you don't open the freaking door. So you can't door a biker in this car. Or you can, but you know, it helps you so that you don't. I just bit my tongue. <laughs> all right, man, listen. So it's a Jag. And we all know about Jags and reliability, oh, okay? Yeah. So. Do you think this thing's gonna really be as reliable as we think it is, like a traditional EV? First of all, they give you a good warranty. Um, What's the warranty? Three years comprehensive, and then I think for the batteries, it's like eight years or some crazy mileage that you're never gonna reach. That's not bad. So, uh, yeah. And also, the first reports for reliability um, kind of show that this is more reliable than the internal combustion JLR products. So. I don't know how, how reliable it's gonna be, but it's definitely better than others. And yeah, it should be fine. So, given this, Model Y, and all the other oh, stuff. There's a lot of competition. Ioniq 5, Kia V6, ID4, Volkswagen, why not? You have the BMW stuff. Well, what's, what sticks out more to me is the, the Ioniq 5. Which is a lot cheaper though. Yeah. Right? And not as luxurious. No, but given like, you know, weighing out all the competition. Would you buy this over any of those and why? Yeah, so like about a year ago, I was looking at used iPaces and they were like around 60 grand and that would be really appealing. Um, also a, a good thing about the iPace is because it's, it came in 2019, you can find used ones, like they're more available on the market. Um, new at the at $100,000, it is a lot more money than Kia V6s and whatever, but look at it. it, it it feels like a lot more money, right? So it's a justified price you, hike. You can see where your money's gone. The and problem is good. the BMW iX, right? Because the iX is cheaper than this, it's a lot bigger than this, and it's a lot uglier than this. So it's a bit of a trade-off. I don't know, to be honest, if I could camouflage the iX and not look at it, yeah, it's it's better in every way. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for somebody that has, has eyeballs and like looking at his cars. This is much nicer. I don't know, this is so pretty. This attracts a lot of attention. Everybody's like, ooh, that looks nice. Yep. So overall score, I think I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. If the range, if somehow they could, you know, make it a bit more efficient and make the range like 450, I would give it a nine because, you know, the 373 is okay, but for daily driving, you need to keep it under 80%. So then you only get like 270 something and that could make a day tight. Like the other day my wife drove it to work, whatever. And then if you completely deplete it, um, you need quite a lot of hours to charge it overnight. So, you know, if you plug it in at midnight, maybe by eight in the morning, it's not fully done. Yeah. So yeah. with a little bit more range, yeah, it would have been fantastic. 
So, you know, Jaguar is going to go completely electric by 2025. So really? So, no more V8 F-types. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. Just buy them while you can, I guess. The one you're driving right now, and you maybe saw already, or will see. Yeah, will be the last one of its kind. Well, anyway, that's pretty much it with the, today with the Jaguar. 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 I like this car a lot. I wish I could have one. It's very nice. Me too. Okay, that's all for today. Please subscribe, share this video with your friends. Most Adios. importantly, until next time, be well. Have a great day. Bye. Perfect. Perfect.